Okay. <clears throat> I guess we'll do that. That works. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Um, yeah, can we lose the, uh, the foie gras and the, uh, okay. the craft uh, services uh, okay. table and start getting a, a hunk of a good old American cheese? You got it. Okay, stand by. Cookie, can I have some names, please? Yeah. Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, I want to do a quick roll call. Nate, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, contestants, how you doing? Glad you could be here. How many people do we have playing today? Just the one today. Right, doing the solo thing. I need a name here. Okay, can you get that set up for me? Yeah, Thank you uh, very much. Hell, and this isn't gonna work. Okay, thanks, babe. It's yarn tangled 30 up seconds. here. Your buzzer is the letter B, is in Betsy Ross. Right, yeah. You there? I'm here. Oh, we're holding you up, huh? Okay. Hey, let's get the ball rolling here. Cookie, are we going right now? Yeah, you got a problem with that? What? All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pick a cat. Get ready for some fun. It's yeah. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Celebrity how cute. Wet. Right here, 1,000 bucks for a right answer. Hey, how closely do you really examine condom packages? Of the following, which is the only word that cannot be formed from the letters in the word lubricated? Crab, date, tuber, or trick? Um... Trick. There's no trick in lubricated. Yeah, there is no K there, that's why. However, 9 out of 10 prostitutes surveyed said tricks should be lubricated. Might make things a little bit easier. Hit me. We need a category. The name of this category is... Would you I'm not going to put up with people time? trying to promote right, crap here. Bucks coming at you. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Which of the following sentences could have only one possible meaning within the bounds of logical reality? The film crew shot a pilot, the nun kicked her smoking habit, the boy's nose was running, or the ball player stole third base. The boy's nose was running. Yeah. I knew you'd pick this one. You know it's more than you I'm think. Just be category. careful. The category behind this question is Naughty sitcom actors and bodily fluids. The amount on the table is three grand. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. If Jack Tripper, Goofy Chef on TV's Three's Company, were to micturate on your shoe, what would be on your shoe? Vomit, milk, blood, or urine? I would guess milk. Uh, that would be lactate. Oh. And let's see the correct answer. <laughs> You're in. Oh, Chrissy, I went pissy. All right, come on, hit me. We need. Uh oh. Test Gibberish test question test time. Score. It's time for a snickerfish restaurant. The category for this gibberish question. Peta and water sports. Opening value on this gibberish question: five thousand bucks. Okay, to solve this puzzle, you gotta think fast because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. Now remember, there's no screwing on gibberish questions. Ready? Put your fingers on. I'm one player. I don't need to screw. Me, what does this rhyme with? Show Joe Mo's fur coat. Show Joe Mo's fur coat. First hint: you usually sing it in a round. Oh, got it. Let's see what you got. Start typing. Show Joe Mo's for coat wrapped around your sleeve. Okay, pick a category. Question five. Here's the category. Bread and other bodily functions. Pop a right answer for this one, you got 3,000 greenbacks. Okay, we're coming at you, heads up. Obeying the German translation, what should you do after eating pumpernickel bread? Burp, pee, fart, or lick your lips? For me, that's rye bread. <laughs> In case this ain't, this ain't it. Answer, fart. Pumpern means to break wind. 
How about it? Hit me with a caddy. Gotta be quick. This one's gonna be men that bathe together stay together. And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this. Let's one. see if we can try to Green stick with the lower the scoring ones and try to get a rally going. The best known three stooges were Mo, Larry, and Curly. The three wise men are part of the Christmas story. Who were the three men in a tub? Noah and his sons, electrician, carpenter, roofer, baker. That'd be the baker, the cowstick maker, and the butcher. I can understand the meat and the baked goods. But what the hell did they do with the candlesticks? You don't want to know. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. The category. Rock, paper, scissors, and protectors of world order. A right answer will get you two Gs for this question. Do you know the rules of rock, paper, scissors? Imagine that Rambo is a rock, James Bond is a paper, and Dick Tracy is a pair of scissors. What could happen in a battle between them? Rambo strangles Tracy, is shot by Bond. Bond covers Tracy, is crushed by Rambo. Bond smothers Rambo, cut in half by Tracy, or Tracy slices Rambo, is suffocated by Bond. Now it's a different game. Rope, paper, gun. Should oh. pick this. Bond smothers Rambo is cut in two by Tracy. Or in other words, paper covers rock, scissors cuts paper. Okay. Pick yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a second. Huey and Deweyville? Don't they have a brother named Louisville? Louisville, Kentucky? Flying over the lines. We're hitting the local. Kentucky, that's area code 502. Okay, just flipping through the Louisville, okay. Kentucky phone book here and picking out a name at random. And what do you say we go with Miss Myra Martin? Okay, we are dialing uh, Martin, Myra Martin uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, for our fiber optic field trip, let's see if she's home. Waiting on Myra Martin. Hello. Hello, is this Myra Martin? Yes, it is. Myra, hi. My name is Nate, and I'm actually the host of a CD-ROM game show called You Don't Know Jack, and I just picked your number at random out of the Louisville white pages, and uh, basically, Myra, this is probably a strange request, but we need a question for our trivia game here, and if you've got a minute, I was wondering if you think you could help us come up with a question. I'm not trying to sell, sell you anything. This is just for fun. Sure. That'd be great. Really? Yes. Boy, that was easy. Uh, that's great. Uh, Myra, wh what are you doing in Louisville? I work at a hair salon. Oh, a hair salon. Cool. Well, maybe we'll do a hair question. Do you, do you, uh, you like doing hair? I love it. You love it. All right, so you got to come up with a hair question for us. So, Myra, I'm going to put you on with our producer. Okay. And his name is Cookie, and he'll explain everything to you. All right. <laughs> Myra, be creative. Uh, you know, I'd love a hair question, but, you know, it can be on whatever you want. Oh, that's great. All right, Myra, stay on the line. Okay, we'll be back to our fiber optic field trip in just a few questions, but in the meantime, we need another category. Sure. How about it? Hit me with the category. Maybe a lip sync question? Next up, I'd like to teach the world to sync. And this one's going to be worth $1,000. Well, we know they're not singers, so I guess this is possible. If the 1980s pop group Millie Vanilli was a pair of human kidneys, what percentage of the duo would need to be functioning in order to still be doing the job satisfactorily? Millie and half of Vanilli, one half of Millie, one quarter of Vanilli, or just Millie? I think it's just... Millie. Really? That's, uh, that's pretty way off. Oh. Actually, they'd work okay with just one half of Millie. Can really? Can function at around 25% total capacity, so one half of Millie or one quarter of the pair would be necessary. Okay, pick a category. Number nine. Oh, it's 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 nine. Number nine. The category is because Jane has no. Well, the Toronto Raiders game is looking pretty exciting so far. Okay, so Tarzan is redecorating his tree hut and decides to let his animal friends help him choose the right color scheme. Which one of these animals has the complete color vision required to help Tarzan pick out the drapes? The leopards, the elephants, the snakes, or the apes? The apes, maybe? Apes. They perceive the full spectrum of color from the blue end to the red end. And speaking of red ends, I hope Tarzan has some soft cushions for when the baboons come over. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. 
The name of this category is Roman Emperors and the Open Road. And we are talking 1,000 bucks for this question. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. Which of the following might Julius Caesar have regularly driven across in his chariot? An oviduct, a viaduct, an aqueduct, or a mallard duck? I think it would be a viaduct. Oh, I think it was a viaduct. A viaduct. Yeah. yeah Aqueducts may have water. Serious engineering going on in those days. Okay, we're at the end of round one now. On to round two. <laughs> now pay attention, because all the questions in round two are worth more money. Still got that fiber optic get. field trip to deal with. All right, coming back to our fiber optic field trip, we've got Myra Martin on the line from Louisville, Kentucky. Myra, are you there? Yeah. All right, Myra, get yourself set. Here we go. Okay. Okay, Myra, tell us the category. The category is hair. Hair it is, and we're going to make this category worth 5000 bucks. All right, Myra, you know what to do. Take it away. Put your fingers on your buzzer. Who has more hair per square inch? Redhead, blonde, brunette, or grayhead? I think it'd be brunettes. Myra, brunettes. No, that's incorrect. Because brunette um, hair is thicker and not quite as fine, so you can't get as many hairs per square inch. Oh. All right, Myra, tell us what the correct answer is. The correct answer is blonde. Uh, I don't know if blondes have more fun, but they do have more hair per square inch. All right, great hair question, Myra. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. All right, I think we already got your uh, address, so we'll send you a T-shirt or something. So you take it easy, Myra. Thanks. Thank that was Myra Martin of Louisville, Kentucky. All right, let's keep going. How about it? Hit me with the category. Okay. And I suppose this isn't sci-fi TV or something. Blossom. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. The innermost circle of hell in Dante's Inferno is inhabited by whom? The fraudulent, the violent, heretics, or traitors? I think that would be the traitors. It's reserved for traitors. And the makers of Family Matters and Blossom. Okay, they found a way to relate it okay, to it, I guess. Category. Here's the category. Violin bows, dog food, and glue. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. One of these things is not like the others. Which of these things just doesn't belong? Mustang, Bronco, Pinto, or Colt? Colt. The Colt. That's Dodge, I think. Ford didn't make the Colt. That was Dodge. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Yeah, drop the bomb on me. All right, let's see what we're doing here. You dropped a bomb on me, baby. And this one is not going to be easy. $6,000. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. The Pentagon uses a particular term in its measurement of casualties from nuclear war. This unit of measure equals 1 million deaths. What's it called? Megacorps, D109, ACLU, or Kilolot? I think it's a ACLU. ACLU or Acceptable Casualty Loss Unit. That would be W-R-O-N-G or wrong. Oh. Too bad you didn't pick this. Megacorps. Megacorps. Well, it's sure comforting to know the government has a term for this. How about it? Hit me with the category. The category is a surprise in your picnic basket. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Okay, imagine you and a friend are having a picnic. Suddenly, she pulls out a jar of some dark tar substance and demands you taste it. If it's a popular English sandwich spread, then which one of these could it be? Dolomite, Marmite, Hematite, or Hermaphrodite? I think that'd be Marmite. You'll be choking down Marmite. It's an English sandwich bread made from yeast extract. As to whether it'll stay down, well, it mar might not. Oh. Okay, pick a Boom. category. Question number 16. And I like it too. Next up, love of food. This question's going to be worth $2,001 bills. Okay, get yourself set. It's time. If you said, I slowly, methodically stroke the meatloaf, you'd be using which of the following? An independent clause, an interrogative phrase, a parenthetical phrase, or a dependent clause? It's 
not an interrogative, that'd be a question. Dependent clause, baby? And here's the right answer. <laughs> Independent. Clause. It stands all by itself. The clause, not the meat clause. Alright, come on, hit me. Alright. The category. Let's have a diner party. And if you can figure this one out, I this isn't my this isn't my game so far. Focused on the screen. Here we go. You're planning a backyard human rib barbecue. If each person eats one rib, how many people will one torso feed? 11, 16, 24, or 36? I think it'd be 16. Rejected. Oh God. Now the Was it 24? 24, humans have 12 pairs of ribs or 24 total. Okay, pick a cat. This one's gonna be the unholy marriage of rock music and advertising. And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Hang on tight, cause here we go. If the 1970s pop group ABBA changed the name of its hit Take a Chance on Me to Take a Chance on Mead, what type of product might It's an alcoholic beverage. Mead? It's a type of booze made from fermented honey and water. Take a chance, take a chance, take a Thank you, Thorlar. How about it? Hit me with the category. The category behind this question is dying on stage. Hello, this one's gonna be worth $6,000. Okay, hang tight, put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. According to popular legend, how was Aeschylus, the father of Greek tragedy, comically killed? Trampled to death by eager theater patrons, struck on the head by a falling tortoise, speared by a javelin thrown by the lead actor, or crushed by a falling Trojan horse prop? Ah! No. Here's what you should have guessed. Yeah, apparently the tortoise was dropped by an eagle flying over the theater. Yeah, I'll tell you, everybody's a critic. Yep. All right, come on, hit me. We need a caddy. Uh, question number 20. All right, let's see what we're doing here. TV families and interlopers. It's going to be worth $4,000. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. The Brady Bunch is to Oliver as the Partridge family is to blank. Tracy, Reuben, Ricky, or Chris? Uh, Reuben? I'll tell you, if Incorrect were a hit single, you'd be at the top of the charts. Crap. You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. Uh. Ricky, he and Oliver were both annoying little visitors who joined the sinking ship, uh, the uh, cast uh, late in the show's run. Okay, pick a category. All right, I may have made a mistake by starting this one early. Enter the attack. If you see two words together and they form a match, buzz in. $2,000 will be yours if you're right, but each time you're wrong, 2000 shall be taken away. But be not fooled. It won't be a match unless it fits this clue. Oops, I made a mistake. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Let's see how many mistakes you make on this. Uh, golf. All right, traveling's basketball. Tennis. Football. Hockey. Baseball. Billiards. Woo! Nice shooting, Dex! You made that look easy. And I needed that, every one of that, I think. 
you're sorry to ride in the line of having a good game, but the truth is you're, you're right behind that line. So as you bask in the lukewarm glow of mediocrity, just remember that you don't know Jack. Yeah. Okay, great show, everybody. Um, Cookie, what's the plan here with the contestants? Uh, listen, excuse me. Uh, whenever you feel like playing again, you just gotta let me know, all right? All of the guns and violence today. We need a toy for the kids that won't blow... Okay, and that concludes this episode of You Don't Know Jack, Volume 1. If you liked what you saw, make sure you hit like, subscribe, spread the word. We'll see you next time here in Tickets, Please Gaming, as the arcade is now broken.